At the heart of Great Bear Island is a vast valley filled with open fields and surrounded by jagged mountains. The remote Pleasant Valley region, plagued by powerful storms and high winds, became the home to many islanders. From its economic boom and bust to the bright lights and falling stars of the quiet apocalypse, this is the history of Pleasant Valley. If you enjoy this lore video for the long dark, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so I can keep making them. Before I continue, there are some disclaimers I need to provide. If you see this symbol at the bottom left, that means there is even a mild amount of speculation that I am saying at that moment in the video. That way, you know I'm interpreting lore that might not be 100% clear. Also, I will be making an effort to source all the lore for each video from now on. There will be video chapters for each section, and I will link all lore notes and their fandom wiki pages so you can read them yourself. That way, if you are confused, you can read the sources for this video. There isn't an exact year the valley was first settled, but the biggest and only major settlement, Thompson's Crossing, was founded in 1919. Somewhat smaller than the nearby town of Milton after its population crash, the town was constructed along the road connecting Milton to the highway. While Milton was a major economic hub for the island as a whole, I can imagine that Thompson's Crossing grew much slower and wasn't as important. Instead, the settlement would be more important for the valley itself, providing a place for the miners of the valley to call home. It would eventually have its own church, graveyard, community center, and grocery store. The surrounding valley would also see some smaller settlements and homesteads, including Skeeter's Ridge, Three Strikes Farmstead, and the large farmstead that would eventually be owned by Molly. The valley would also get its own radio and weather station called Signal Hill. The valley would primarily be known for its mining and farming. Mining would take place within the Cinder Hills mine, which was used for coal mining. I'm not too sure what the valley farmers grew, but it is clear that Molly's homestead had these trees as its primary crop. I don't know exactly what it provided though. We know that Great Bear Island has warm summers, so something must have been growing there. These trees most likely grew fruit, such as apples, or they were for sap production. The Three Strikes Farmstead also has these wooden structures which were probably to support or protect the crop, but there is no sign of what was growing there. Following decades of seismic activity, the mining economy of the valley would collapse. Mining would be too dangerous, causing the Cinder Hills mine to be unusable. Because of this, the valley would eventually turn to logging as an alternative job source. With the mining industry of the valley all but a distant memory, Thompson's Crossing would see a localized collapse. Following the global financial event known as the Collapse, most of the island would be reeling from its effects. For Pleasant Valley, the effects weren't felt immediately. It would take some time for the valley natives to notice that their already difficult remote life was getting harder. Simple comforts such as coffee and peaches would become rare commodities. Eventually, entire deliveries to Thompson's Crossing Rural Store would be delayed or cancelled entirely. The store would eventually do away with its ATM due to the lack of cash, not that it had any value anyways. As the island's post-collapse political division would develop, the town would start to rely on the locals instead of the mainland. Community gardens similar to the Victory Gardens of the World War II era would pop up and provide the locals with what they needed. With the Fart Territory expansion, I believe there is a high possibility that the potatoes and carrots seen all over the island were the primary crops in these community gardens. Cut off from the rest of the world, the valley relied on itself and the people living there. After dealing with the revival of Carter Dam in the 1990s, the forest talkers would take aim at the rest of the industry on the island. Briarhouse, a logging company based in the Broken Railroad region, was one of these industries that sparred with the forest talkers. Pleasant Valley itself would be seen as a pristine place that needed to be protected. The already collapsing mining industry would be their first target. As mining faded from the valley, the forest talkers almost certainly targeted any attempt to log for timber. With very little signs of any logging in the valley, they were most likely successful, but we don't know. They would continue their efforts within Pleasant Valley for decades, but one day, they would do something drastic. A few weeks before the first flare, in the middle of a blizzard, the forest talkers would block the main road out of the valley. Considering the lengths they went through to preserve the island, I would not be surprised if explosives were involved. The townspeople even noticed their strange activity, but they blamed the avalanche on the blizzard. For weeks, the valley would remain cut off from the highway. During the final days before the quiet apocalypse, a group of forest talkers would conduct a raid on Tom Joplin's bunkers. 
Tom, who was an old man, was a resident of Skeeter's Ridge. He was noted to be showing strange behavior. The forest hawkers would target his bunkers and take any supplies that were left after Tom disappeared. Days before the first flare, a terrible blizzard would force the residents of Thompson's Crossing to gather in the community center. Being cut off from the rest of the island, they had no choice but to conserve their resources. Their homes would grow cold as the blizzard raged. As the first flare sparked the quiet apocalypse, a passenger airline would fall from the sky. It would crash in the hills on the west side of the valley, bringing many new survivors to the valley as well as a sea of unfortunate souls that would not make it. Slowly, the survivors would make it to Thompson's Crossing over the course of a day or so. Up the road in Keeper's Pass, Molly, a Pleasant Valley resident, would find Astrid, nearly frozen to death. Astrid would awaken a few days later in Molly's homestead. After finding her way to Thompson's Crossing, Astrid would make an effort to save the crash survivors, discover the valley's many secrets, learn who Molly really was, and discover Will was still alive and on his way to Perseverance Mills. This vast valley, left mostly untouched by industry, had a rich story worth telling. Its history was shaped by its people, the earthquakes, and the forest talkers. Just like everywhere else on Great Bear Island, Pleasant Valley would suffer great desperation, even if it was delayed. Thompson's Crossing, like its sister town Milton, would endure through their economic boom, bust, and post-collapse reality. With just half a dozen or so people left before the first flare, Pleasant Valley would persevere under the light of a falling star. <laughs> Whoever named this area Pleasant Valley had a pretty good sense of humor. Welcome to Crossroads Elegy. This video marks the beginning of the Wintermew Episode 3 story arc. While the history of Pleasant Valley ends here, there is much more to talk about from Episode 3, the buffer memories of Signal Hill and the rural store, the tall tale legends, and the residents of the valley. If you've been watching my lore videos from the beginning, you might have noticed that the background music is different in this video. I finally got the thumbs up from Hinterland about using the in-game soundtrack in these videos, so I can finally make the switch. I want to give a huge thank you to Sasha and the creator of the Season 1 and Star Citizen tracks I've used throughout the series so far. I will link their works one last time in the description as a thank you for those amazing songs. Although I will probably still use them from time to time. If you want to catch up on any lore I've already covered, you can check out all the various playlists for the history of the Long Dark, Wintermute, Rudiger's Project, the people and places of Great Bear Island, and the Buffer Memories. They will be linked in the description. If you enjoyed this lore video for the Long Dark, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so I can keep making them.